like in the case of Antonio Barbo, a 13-year-old who murdered his own grandmother for money to buy pizza and pot. This is Antonio Barbo, who is facing charges for murder in Wisconsin. 14 years old, Damn. Barbo was in court for the murder of his 78-year-old great-grandmother, Barbara Olson. Rather than trying to explain what this 14-year-old monster did, Bro. <laughs> nah, he said a detention center. That's funny. But little fools like this, little fools like this, it ain't nothing scarier than a kid killer. I don't care what nobody say. They be having that, oh, yeah, try them as a teenager, try them as an adult. If you know what you doing and what you did it for, meaning murdering for pizza and we. Then that's tried as an adult. You gonna have somebody arguing like he's still a kid. Look what he killed her for. Pizza. Fuck that. Yo, grandma, bro. Um throw it at him. Let's hear it directly from the mouth of the killer. I tried to uh, scare her to get money and then use force if needed. Yeah, he sound like a grown man. My nigga just said, I tried to scare her and use force if needed. Get this nigga life. I can't even talk that proper. My nigga said, force if needed. I be needing to use if needed in so many sentences. But I just be like, yeah, they socked him if they had to. If needed is so proper and well spoken. My nigga, you are, he, he knows what he's do. Get this nigga life without parole. Wanna hear nobody say it was over pizza, it was over weed, it was over what the hell are you getting high for? Well I was I was getting plowed at 14. But still, squad. I ain't killed my mama for it. Shit, I was still in it, but I wasn't. This is crazy. Um an attack, uh I guess to kill. The boys hid weapons in their pants before catching a ride to be dropped off at Antonio's grandma's house. What happened when the boys got inside is shocking. She knew I was on the run and she said she was gonna call my mom. She nodded and then I took the first swing. Okay, and when you say that you took the first swing, it's with the hand axe? Yes, sir. Antonio also said that he tried to put his great grandmother's body in a car trunk, but when he couldn't, oh, yeah, he left give it in the garage and covered it with a blanket. Judy, Barbara's granddaughter, was the person who discovered the body. She quickly ran to a neighbor's house to call the police. Uh, please send an ambulance from the police. My mother is laying in the garage and there's a lot of blood and there's a blanket over her head. There's how a lot of blood. The, how did the towel, how did the blanket get over her? I have no idea. And how old is your mother? Dispatcher already knew it. That's a murder. <clears throat> She asked the little girl. She wasn't even supposed to ask the little. She said, how did the blanket get over her head? Because how somebody going to die and the blanket get over their head? The dispatcher already knew who to send out there. Nigga, homicide. As soon as the little girl said a blanket over her head, she like, yeah, homicide for sure. She is um, 78. And is she breathing? I don't know. I can't look. The blanket is over her head and I can't look. Okay, can't who's look. here with you? Oh, God, the neighbor. Okay, can the neighbor check if she's breathing? Oh, you don't I'm have to go and look. You don't have to go. Man, why you out? Check if she's breathing. Okay, if you would like you to check. Are you sending somebody? I'm working on it. I need to know if she's breathing. Well, Judy. I swear, some dispatchers be the dumbest bitches in the world, bro. She just told you this lady is over there dead. Well, bleeding with a blanket over her head and she's not moving. The dispatcher said, I need you to check and see if she's breathing. Old boy said, excuse me, we need you to send someone. She said, I'm working on it. I need you to check first, bitch. If you don't send nobody over here to help my grandma who up in the garage bleeding, to death, that, that don't make no damn sense. You already buzzed down the situation when you said she got a towel over her head. You know what's going on. Why would you have a little girl go disrupt the crime scene, take the towel off her head to check and see if she's breathing? 
That shit don't make no sense to me. Judy and her neighbor are left frantic to call for help and try and save Barbara. Antonio and his accomplice used the 100. And this one thing I don't get. If she checked to see if she's breathing, whether she say yes or no, you still got to send them out, right? Whether she say no, she's not breathing, you send in the police in the ambulance. If you say yes, she's breathing, you're sending the police in the ambulance. Why the fuck do she got to check? Dispatchers be saying some dumb shit sometimes, bro. to get high and enjoy some pizza. During the trial, you can see Barbo reading a statement, apologizing for the killing and asking for forgiveness. Barbo said he regretted his actions. Regardless of his apologies, Barbo was sentenced to life imprisonment as he continued crying. Ooh. However shocking you think Barbo... That shit say eligible for what it say? Am I tripping? Barbo said he regretted his actions. Regardless of his apologies, Barbo was sentenced to life in prison. Eligible for parole when he is 50. Damn. At 14. That's the right kind of sentence. That's my type of county, nigga. This thing got sentenced at 14. He won't be eligible for parole till he's 50, meaning he probably won't even get it. Say, nigga, wait five more years. He probably won't be eligible till he like 55, 6. Damn. That's trial as an adult. That's trial as a senior, nigga. Fucking adult, nigga. I thought he was going to, I promise I thought he was going to get juvie life. Juvie life meaning you get out when you're 25. You know what I'm saying? That's what I thought he was going to get, honestly. He didn't, they, they get it. They get 50? Whew. He going to be gay for sure. Damn. Imprisonment as he continued crying. However shocking you think Barbo's case was, LaShirley Morris's case gives it a run for its money. This is LaShirley Morris, <clears throat> who is facing charges for murder in Atlanta. LaShirley is accused of killing three-year-old Kwan Mason. Wow. The cause of death was physical abuse with a baseball bat, which was later ruled as a homicide. Wow. The incident occurred October 21st, 2017, when Morris beat the boy as punishment. But what punishment could be so severe? This old ugly, nappy, braid-ass bitch. How you gonna take a bat? And I ain't... This, this don't sound messed up to say, but you can do a kid like that with your hands, bro. You really took a bat to a kid, squad? That's why I say you take a life, we take your life. Ghost for president, nigga. This bitch need to be dead. Straight up. All right, I just need to be dead. And raped. <laughs> I'm just... But for real, bro, I hate this hoe. How you gonna take a, 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 a baseball bat to a kid, squad? That is crazy. You hear that a child is beaten to death? Well, listen here. And then a violent death this... for taking a cupcake from the kitchen. A child who was inside the home witnessed the attack and reported the events to the police. Not awake, he's not alert. No, he's not alert. He was breathing at first. Oh. Now he's not breathing. Morris's sister, Glendria Morris, was also charged in the child's death because she did not intervene during the incident. The... Oh, so that was her on the phone. My bad, squad. That's... The sister on the phone with the police now. So was she there or did she pull up and find a kid like that? And reported the events to the police. Not awake, he's not alert. No, he's not alert. He was breathing at first. Oh. Now he's not breathing. Morris's sister, Glendria Morris, was also charged in the child's death because she did not intervene during the incident. The victim, Kwan Mason, lived with Glendria Morris, who was also his legal guardian at the time of the alleged killing. K1 and three bro. of his siblings entered the Division of Family and Child Services care after their mother was arrested on a reckless conduct charge in March 2017. Oh, According to DFCS records, Mason allegedly left her children home alone, had anger issues, and abused the children. Geraldine Mason, the victim's mother, was... So why y'all didn't take the kids? 
if CPS came out there, y'all got a case on them saying that the kids were neglected and left at home, what did y'all give them a warning? Y'all told them not to do it again? This how these DCF, whatever cases be working, bro. Once they make a case on you, right? They will keep that case open for like 30 days, 60 days. They'll probably come by your house two more times after that. Make sure you got food in the refrigerator. Make sure your kid's room got a bed in there. Make sure they got, you know what I'm saying? They do welfare checks for probably like 60 days. If everything cool, then they close the case. But don't mean that the parent's still not an unfit parent. Like these cases is just straight. That is a joke, bro. We just seen this with the last case with the kid. Child service was involved in that case. They left it alone, kid ended up dead. Released in April 2017 and reunited with one of her children, but requested temporary guardianship for Kwan and his twin brother, according to DFCS records. In court, the 911 call LaShirley made showed that the baby was already dead before first responders arrived. LaShirley Morris was found guilty of murder, aggravated assault, and cruelty to children charges and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after pleading guilty to murder. LaShirley's actions were horrible. However, Hoskins' reaction seemed... Life in prison with the possibility of parole after you beat your own kid with a baseball bat. Who makes up these laws? Who? Like, damn, it's like these people that make laws have no real lives, never had kids in their lives, never had people they loved in their lives. Just people get parole. People get 15 years for mass shootings, bro. You ain't got no kids that never went to school. You ain't never thought like that could have been my kid. Your wife ain't never got even like this. This is crazy, bro. You ain't got no daughter, like the little girl down the street that got raped. You don't think that could have been my daughter? The home invasion that happened where they ran up in there and killed everybody in the house. You don't think like damn that could have been me and my family? But you gave them ten years with parole. Why are these niggas not dying? Is what I'm saying. This shit need to be fixed, bro. This country will be fixed. It will be great again. For real, if I was the president, bro. Donald Trump on some bullshit, that nigga cap. America won't be great again until I'm president, bro. I'm telling y'all niggas, not lying. These niggas will be dying. Oh, you kill somebody? Well, you gotta die. That shit would go viral so fast, this country would be so clean. I'm talking about the first week. The first week. No ifs, ands, or buts. No if ands, or buts. I was mad. She cheated on me. I walked in there and there was a man up in my bed. I walked on just eh. should have picked the right bitch. Not kill her. Now we gotta kill you. Straight up, bro. To top it. <clears throat> this is Jaleel Hoskins, who is facing charges for murder in Michigan for the murder of his girlfriend, Latrice Mays. Mm -hmm. Mays, a mother of five, disappeared in March of 2013. Her sudden and mysterious absence led to her family wanting answers and ultimately a nationwide search. Initially, Hoskins denied being involved with the murder whatsoever. I have nothing to do with the murder. I have, I have nothing to do with the disappearance. However, Hoskins quickly changed his plea like when he heard maybe. the testimonials and evidence being argued against him. First, Hoskins' own cousin took the stand. After, after the domestic or whatever happened, uh, I guess I guess she after they left, she told, she said she was going to tell the police that he stabbed her. This nigga snitching and get a deal on his own cousin, which is whatever. You shouldn't have killed her, nigga. But y'all remember I was telling y'all where niggas you could tell food that just look like somebody that's jealous and. Y'all watch who y'all be fucking on, bro. I'm telling you. And I'm talking to the females that's watching this shit. Because a lot of niggas, you have to understand this, bro. He didn't kill her because she wanted a new job. 
either she wanted to leave or she got caught cheating. It's the only reason she killed her. All right? Females, y'all got to understand this. Man, I hope y'all listening. This might sound fucked up, but I'm about to tell you something real. Especially to you women that's 21 and over. Because this is when it start happening. <clears throat> if you don't like your boyfriend no more, right? You don't like your husband no more, your fiance no more. And you think you broke up with him. Let me tell you this. Y'all not broken up until he's ready to break up and move on. I don't give a fuck what you say. Y'all are not broken up until he's ready to move on. Let you have another nigga at the house. Let he catch you with another nigga, bro. It's going to be a situation to where your ass going to get killed or your new boyfriend going to get killed. The difference between male and female, all right? If we cheat on our bitch and our girl find out what she want to do, beat the female up, slash her tires, sub her on Facebook, Instagram, that's as far as it's going to go. But when it comes between men, somebody going to lose their life. Females got to understand that shit, bro. You are not out of a relationship until that nigga move on, get a new girlfriend, and don't want shit to do with you no more. So, realize and know who you get with before you make them your motherfucking boyfriend. Remember that shit. Because you're going to end up dead. Or your boyfriend going to end up dead. Somebody going to... I promise you, bro. I promise you. About doing it. Doing what? Killing mm -hmm. I guess he choked her or something. Did he say he choked her? Yes. Then, one of Hoskins' close friends took the stand. He said, I did her. I need her. I need some help. She, I can't carry her by myself. Lastly, on the same day of the murder, police dash cam footage showed them responding to a call Latrice had made in which she claimed Hoskins was abusing her. After hearing the piles of evidence against him, Hoskins was forced to change his plea. Hoskins pleaded guilty to the murder of Latrice Mays and also admitted to tampering with the evidence. Hoskins, a habitual criminal offender, decided to take Mays' life because he was afraid Winnie she would ass, report nigga. his assault on the father of two of her children to the police. What? Evidence. Hoskins, a habitual criminal offender, decided to take Mays' life because he was afraid she would report his assault on the father of two of her children to the police. Hoskins was initially charged with open murder, which carries a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole. Mays was afraid she would not regain custody of two of her children if she did not cooperate with law enforcement in the assault against the children's father. Hoskins was given a maximum life sentence in prison as a repeat offender. He attacked the podium before repeat being restrained offender. by police. <laughs> Hoskins' reaction was crazy. However, nothing could prepare you for the reaction of Ricky Hand. This is Ricky Hand. A Springfield man possibly facing right. new he, he charges tonight after so he throws urine and feces on his what attorney in court. Did you just give me 40 years? He was facing charges yes, for multiple robberies in Ohio. Ricky had been on a robbing spree, hitting numerous local convenience stores late at night and running off with some extra cash. However, this crime spree would soon come to an end the night he decided to try his luck with John's drive through Ricky was one of them niggas putting it in, uh... <laughs> Ricky was one of them fools getting it in. With that being said, I seen this one already, so we can't do this one. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to get up out of here. What time is it? It's 9.45. I'm getting in the shower, edit some videos. <sighs> and lay up, squad. I'm going to get at y'all tomorrow, man. Um, be cool. How y'all be cool?